ladies and gentlemen so happy to have this next guest uh on the show he's been on before and we're always happy to have him people are always happy to learn from this man and hear what he has to say we're talking about a man six-time fight of the night winner in the ufc former contender at the welterweight uh division bare knuckles fighter and now one of the best commentators in the world of bare knuckles fighting over the bkfc the man they call lights out chris Lytle. welcome back to the show chris Hey, thank you. That's a great intro. <laughs> You're very welcome. It's all true, 100% true. Uh, you merit it and you deserve it. And I'm really excited to have you on to talk about uh, the world of fighting in general, but some of these interesting fights that that are coming on and that have come on in the past. So let's go uh, in reverse for a second. So Tyron Woodley uh, fought against Jake Paul uh, last week or a week or so ago. Um, what was your expectation going into that fight and how did what you saw end up being the same or different to what you expected and and, and explain what you felt you saw that fight? you know i was you know i think a, a lot of guys who've been around the fight world for a long time were like myself and i don't know if it's expecting or hoping that you know the older uh the younger Tyrone Woodley would come out, the guy who's been around uh, for a while who, who, did, who did a lot of fantastic things. Obviously, a fantastic athlete, great striker. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like um, what I saw was the Tyrone Woodley from the last few years. You know what I mean? Think about it. when was the last time? I mean, and this happens to a lot of fighters once they get doing it for a while. Um, the main thing is they just feel like they can't pull the trigger. Right. And, and that's what Woodley felt like to I me. Mean, he was in there. He was in position. He's fast, he's quick, athletic, but he never really pulled the trigger very much. And that when he did, I think he he, he did well. But he was just he did, he wasn't active enough, and he just. But but his last three years of fighting, it's been 100 percent the exact same thing. He just looks yeah. not bewildered is the right word, but he just looks like he can't pull the trigger. Yeah, and that's exactly what I saw here. Like he could have won that fight easy. Yeah, but I, I wouldn't say easy. You know. I, Say we will, you know, Jake Logan, well, they're real tough. They're big, athletic, strong guys who were had a wrestling background. They're big, tough guys, man. I mean, I'm not trying to take that away from but, I mean, I think Woodley could have, you know, if that fight's five years ago, Woodley knocks him out. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. I've been actually saying something similar to that the whole time. It's just if, if it was back when Woodley had confidence in his chin, back when Woodley had, had a little bit quicker reflexes, and was just overall generally you know and in a much better place uh he would have won uh for sure now it's interesting because he did look strong this is the this was a fight that was at 190 and the man probably walks around at that and and to have to make 170 for for the last (laughs) few years was very hard for him right and so his, his body looked great he looked super strong apparently the reach was almost identical, although there was a definitely a two, three inch, three inch or more actually height difference. Um, but I can I ask you, do you think that one of the things that also may have made Tyron tentative is just not wanting to get caught and embarrassed by this guy? Because before you answer, it seemed to me almost like that was was part of the reason he kind of was moving the way he was moving. It's almost like, it's almost like he was saying, I'm going to try to beat this guy, but I've got to just make sure I don't get caught and embarrassed and slept by this guy. What do you think? I mean, 100%. You guarantee that's part of it because in the back of his head, that's the last thing he could deal with. You know, getting getting caught and getting knocked out by this guy was not an option. Um, but, you know, that being said, I, I still feel like it's more of a function of that's what's going on with Woodley now. I mean, I've seen this many times. Look at all the the older guys, especially in boxing, when they were a great fighter and they were this and that, and then all of a sudden they get to a point, and it's not even out of age or mileage, where they cannot pull the trigger. Like right. They just don't They don't throw. Right. They'll get in the position, and they'll be right there, and they'll be in great shape, and they, and they train hard, and they're strong, but they can't pull the trigger. Yeah. And I feel like – I felt like that was him for the past, you know, several fights. Yeah. It's like he's, he just doesn't – he gets in position, but he never – let's go you know what i mean and that could be a function of several things i'm not sure what it is but that, i think even if he was fighting a guy who he's bigger than 
stronger than he wasn't worried about getting knocked out, I think you probably would have seen a lot of the same because yeah. I haven't seen him not fight like that in an awful long time. Last time I remember him not fighting like that, I think it's probably when he fought Robbie Lawler. Yeah. You know, that, that, he's, he's really never fought like that again to me, in my opinion. Right. Or maybe against Darren Till, who he ended up catching and submitting, <laughs> although he was a little bit tentative there as well. But yes. yeah, I, I agree. And, and, you know, one of the things that they say, which I'm, I know that you know, is what happens with a lot of fighters, what happens with a lot of fighters is the, 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 t the amount of time it takes for them to see an opening, for their mind to process it and send it to their, their impulse, you know, to, to their muscles to throw the punch. By the time that process happens, the guy's not even there anymore because the process has slowed enough. And, and I think that's part of it with him, but I also think he's just wanting to, to be more cautious than he should have been. And cause I, I don't, I don't get a feeling that Jake Paul really hurt him or that, or that he was necessarily overly fearful of Jake Paul's power. But I also think he, he saw that Jake Paul was faster. A lot of people were, were saying Tyron was definitely going to be faster years ago. He would have been, I think that mm -hmm. night he, he wasn't, he looked quick. But, but, you know, I think just, you know, the fact that Jake Paul had confidence in his chin, was 15 years younger, and so his recovery ability was so much better, and the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, that, uh, that he, he really did kind of stick and move, and that was different than Jake Paul's other fights. I have a feeling Tyron might have thought that, that Paul was going to want to stand in the pocket the whole time, mm -hmm. and I think if he had... Tyron might have actually been able to beat him by just the fact that Jake was going to put himself in the fire, you know, the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Now, you see, what I don't like here is when you try and uh, pretty much say the same thing as me, so we both are right. You know, I want yeah. I want to try and show my knowledge and make you look wrong, but uh, you, you're saying the right thing, so it's not helping me. Yeah, <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So, Mike, yeah, and I appreciate it. My question uh, oh, yeah. You're right on with what you're saying, though. I, I agree with you. Thank you. So let me ask you this on the flip side. We're focusing on Tyron real quick here. As far as Jake Paul, I, basically he became kind of a – he was on his uh, horse the whole time. He was running yeah. and sticking and moving, and I feel that was a really close fight. It was a split decision. Yeah. I know the right of majority of people were, were some will say, oh, no, Jake Paul, six rounds to two. I don't think it was. I think it was I think it was either five rounds to three or I could have even seen an argument for a draw. So it, well, it go ahead. here's the thing too, if they counted that knockdown, because if, if the ropes stop you from going down, that they're supposed to count that as a knockdown. Yes. And, and so that could have even you know, that could have threw it into Tyron Woodley's favor. Right. Uh, like I said, it, it was a it, it, it was very telling because Jake Paul became the busy fighter, the guy who's trying to stick and move and not stay in there. That's not what you think of him. You know what I mean? You no. think he's a big, athletic, he's a brute. He's going to go in there and try and take the guy out. But he right. was he was a guy he's obviously much bigger than in all reality. And he fought like a smaller guy, in my opinion. So yeah. very telling. He, you could tell he tasted that power. He's like, I don't like this. This is, you know, I got to be very careful. He didn't want to get embarrassed at this point. Right. So he just fought a different style fight i think because he had to yeah and that's that was good that that he showed that he could change things up and he could adjust uh but based on that performance i'd really like your opinion on how good jake paul is because i just i'll tell you what i'll i'll share mine real quick i feel if jake paul was all that in a bag of chips he would have looked a lot better here against this tentative Tyron Woodley. Maybe I'm wrong. What's your assessment of how Jake Paul looks from this fight and where he stands as far as the future in boxing? I mean, he don't get me wrong. He's a good, athletic. He's a tough guy. He's like I said. He's he's a he's a state qualifying wrestler, I believe, in Ohio. That you're good. You're a tough guy if you can do that. You know, and he's big and athletic, and he's got all the resources in the world. But I mean, to really think that he could go out there at that level and really perform any better than he had is kind of unrealistic because you know the, the fight business it takes time to develop in ring time and not just sparring in real fights you know that takes years to develop usually you know and and, and round after round and you you get better each time you learn in there he's jumping right in with some pretty tough guys so he, he might be winning but i don't think he has a ring savvy the, the what we call the ring iq right so i don't think he has that yet and but he's being expected to try to perform 
and he's putting himself in that situation. I don't feel bad for him, but he, he's trying to act like he has that when he doesn't. Yeah. Um, but and people are expecting him to have that when he can't. So right. it's an impossible situation as for he's put himself in it. Um, eventually, I think if he keeps this up, he'll, he'll lose to somebody if he keeps biting off a little bit more than he could do. But he, he's been very selective and done been pretty smart about it so far absolutely so let me talk about this upcoming weekend's fight uh and i'm curious to see because maybe jake against one of the winners of these fights could be interesting so we're looking at uh we're looking at four fighters that i know you're very familiar with three of them yep. i wouldn't be surprised if you were on the same card as all three of them and that would be <laughs> that would be vitor belfort uh hmm. and tito ortiz and anderson silva did you fight in the same <laughs> card as all three of those guys at some point I yeah, at some point, I believe so. Yeah, and then Evander Holyfield, obviously, I'm sure you, when you were uh, uh, a kid, Evander Holyfield yeah. was just getting uh, to the top. And yeah, that's hard, hard, hard to say with anybody now when I was a kid, you know? Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> but, you know, I was a huge fan. You know, I'm a bit older than you, so I was a little bit more than a kid, but not much more when Evander Holyfield was fighting. I was very young, and he's an amazing warrior. Let's talk about that fight first. Uh, first, let's back up. Oscar De La Hoya was supposed to fight against Vitor Belfort, and that was a really interesting fight because I think it was at a 190 weight limp catch weight. And you have Oscar De La Hoya, a 49-year-old former multiple uh, world champion uh, who hadn't fought for 15 years or something. Uh, and 13, 13 years. 13 but, uh, years, right? And then, when, and then when he fought, he was um, – I appreciate it. I'm going to look at that in a second. When he fought, he – right, he was fighting between 140 and 160, Oscar De La yeah. Hoya, right? And then you have Vitor Belfort who is 44 years old. He fought as recently as three years ago in MMA. And his mo his career, he fought between 185 <laughs> MMA middleweight and heavyweight. So the, the bigger <laughs> man for sure yeah. in that matchup was Os was uh, was Vitor. He was uh, only two inches taller, but a substantially bigger and thicker man than bigger. Oscar. You know, just carries the weight, right? You know, I was highly disappointed in this fight to begin with because uh, a, a while back, you know, people were telling me Oscar was interested in doing this, and I got a phone call from somebody who said, "Hey, man, they're throwing your name in the mix. Oh. Would you be interested in fight Oscar?" I was like, "Hell yeah!" You know, I yeah. mean, I had 50 pro boxing matches. I was all about it, and I kept trying to hit him back up. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. And then I found out Vitor, and I, you know, I get it. I'm sure he's, he's been fighting a lot more recently, a bigger name. But I was like, man not even the same weight class and Vitor's never really done pro boxing. I didn't get it. That no. being said, Vitor is going to be way too big and strong and powerful for him. Cause here's, I mean, you know, no testing Vitor is a beast. You right. know? Yes. <laughs> so, yes. I, mean, I thought he was going to come in yoked to the game, but it's going to be huge. And I mean, I feel like, I don't know if something's wrong with Oscar right now, if he's not seeing things for what they are, but, and you don't want to go in there with Vitor Belfer. I mean, if he hits you, he's going to hurt you. You know, Oscar's not at the point where he needs to be getting hurt right now. Um, if you want to go in there and have a good fun fight, you know, whatever. But I mean, going in there and trying against a, a, a guy who hits as hard as Vitor, I don't get it. Yeah. And I think it was going to be a tough fight for him. I think he's going to find out pretty quick. You know, it, it, when you can fight at 140, 147, I mean, you have the bone structure of someone who can fight at 147. Yeah. Uh, Vitor is never getting down to, you know, 177. No. You know what I mean? So no. it's just different. He was going to fight a big, strong guy, and it was going to be a problem i think for him. yeah and i felt that oscar would have could have used his boxing skill and might have been slick enough to have won that fight but it was a dangerous fight it was a fight that I, it was it was it was definitely close vitor very well could I have think won that he could fight. have done that a few years ago he's 49 man i mean right. unless he just has some ungodly genetics and is gonna right you know he looked to me like the guy who's been out there really like living clean and taking care of himself and living the Spartan lifestyle and running and, and, yeah. and not putting any, you know, foreign substances in his body. I right. think he would have, you know, I, I think he'd come out there. He'd look, uh, can you imagine Oscar at 190? He's not going to look good. He's going to no. be flat. Without a doubt. So, I, he may have been walking around at that over the last few years, but not with a good body composition. Yeah. So, I mean, in my opinion, I, I mean, could he have won? Possibly. Uh, I, 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 I highly doubt it. I would have right. thought... I mean, two-minute rounds help, but I, I would have thought he'd got tired, Vitor. It depends on depends on what Vitor, it, it, right. it, you know. Maybe probably know if they want to come out there and just play around and get paid. Yeah, right. I, he could have. But if it was Vitor, a serious fight, then, yeah. 
sorry to interrupt you there. So, you know, the main, the commentator I'm just learning for the uh, main event, Holyfield and Belfort, is going to be former President Donald Trump. I was just pointed out. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be wow. amazing. That's amazing. I can't wait to see that. But let me wow. ask you. Yeah. So you definitely felt, a, a, as many people did, and I would agree, that Vitor was definitely a, 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 a threat in that Oscar fight and oh. possibly could have won. But the difference between oscar de la hoya and a vander holyfield i think is huge that would that, would you know that would be like if me if i just challenged my producer to a fight and then and then i said instead of me chris lytle will be fighting you it's a, it, all of a sudden really <laughs> bad situation like that, but i mean <laughs> you know we got a guy who is a little bit older but just such he, you're taking away all of Vitor's assets. He's bigger. He's stronger. You know, he's been there. Uh, I mean, my guess, Oscar, but I mean, like, Holyfield's, I don't care. That dude, to me, lives more of the Spartan yes. lifestyle. He yes. takes care of himself well. He's still, you know, more relevant, in my opinion. And uh, he, 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 I mean, Vitor, what's Vitor going to do to him? You know, right. I mean, I guess he's faster, but I mean, Holyfield, he's he's still going to have all those skills. I, I don't, I don't see this going, I mean, I, 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 this is a much worse fight for Vitor yes. than Oscar. Yes, I agree a hundred percent. Not only now, uh, Vitor is not two inches taller; he's two inches shorter. He's yeah. naturally the smaller man, and he's mm -hmm. going up against a man in his own sport. You know what I think? A lot of the the young people are feeling, and you and I are both Generation X guys. I know I'm older than you, uh, but uh, I think a lot of people. Uh, that are younger are looking at the age of 58 on a Vander and saying, man, this guy's going to be like a decrepit old man who can't Shit. even move. And I think they're way off on that. I think he'll be 88 and still tough to deal with. Yes. You know what I, mean? yeah, I agree. It's the kind of guy you're dealing with, you know what I mean? Like, like Bernard Hopkins yes. I and mean, that guy fought for a long, and that dude, like, after a big fight, the next day, Bernard's running five miles and eating clean, living right. And it's yeah. like, it, if you're doing that, it's one thing. And if, you know, like Roberto Duran and those guys, I was watching him, he's, he's partying before a fight. Right. There's a difference in how you live, and, and that stuff comes back on you eventually. And I think, you know, Evander Holyfield is just uh, uh, not only genetically gifted, but I think he he, he works hard. He does the right thing. And um, he, he has the skill. He has the ability. I think it's going to be – I think it's going to be a much tougher fight. Um, yeah. But – yeah, he, he's a beast, always has been, always will be. Yeah, I agree. And if we look at Mike Tyson against Roy Jones, even though they were five and, and seven years, or they were, what, th no, they're three and five years younger than Evander, yeah. but still close, and they looked really, really good. And I agree with you. That's one thing I can tell as an older guy is that I really don't think at 58 Evander is going to be feeble and decrepit uh, in no. there. No. And, you know, that being the case, I I really wonder what, Vitor kind of is thinking I guess he's thinking it's a payday and that he's going to do his best and that he can have a little bit of assistance with substances but I, I, well, I have a feeling you know, Holyfield is going to smash him if he wants to well here's what I think though to be honest with you I guarantee you Holyfield's taking this on kind of short notice I, I guarantee they go hey man our thing fell apart go in there you know if you watch the Mike Tyson Roy right Roy Jones wasn't trying to trying to go in there and he was trying to put on a good show and he was trying to hit the body hard. People get him in the head hard. I mean, it was a basically a glorified sparring session yeah. for several million dollars. And I guarantee Holyfield's probably like, you know, I could use a few million dollars. So yeah. I'll go out there and spar with this guy for heck yeah, are you kidding me? Because I mean, and if Vitor tries to put it on him, I think, you know, Holyfield's just smart enough. He, he defense he, he knows. Yeah. So he can defend himself no matter what. He could tie him up, make a dirty fight. He could go hard if he wants, but I guarantee I think they're both going to go out there and say, hey, let's just go out there and put on a good show for the people, and that's what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah, and you know, the one thing that concerns me about that is that apparently, because remember, the Tyson-Roy Jones was an exhibition, and it yeah. was also an exhibition with the stipulation, no knockouts, which is kind yeah. of the weirdest thing I've heard, but uh, <laughs> how, how do you do you know? but, um, But in this fight, what I'm hearing is that this this is going to be a sanctioned fight, even though it's two-minute rounds, 
which is very strange. I guess you can change the, the duration of the rounds in boxing. I think in MMA, if it was not going to be a five-minute round, I don't think it would be an official fight at all. But apparently, yeah, but even with two-minute rounds, this is going to be an official fight, and they've got the odds very close. And so could it still be a glorified sparring match? Or really, it really still, it still could be a glorified sparring match. But I, I, I mean, you've seen, you've seen legit boxing matches you know, on TV where basically that's what it was. You know, I mean, there's nothing that says – you got to try and knock the guy out as hard as you can every time. I mean, they're going to go out there. They might see if there's an opening there, but they're, these are both older guys who are probably in it for, you know, just uh, the last two raw. And, and I think, you know, they're, they're not going to go out there and put put everything on the line if they don't have to. Right. And, and why would they? You know, it, it, to me, in my in their head, this is a glorified sparring session. Yeah. Reminds me of, uh, of an old boxing uh, match. And I was a boxing historian for years before when I was really young, when MMA was just starting. And then yeah. I dropped it for MMA. But I remember a match from 100 years ago with, uh, with uh, Jack Johnson, uh, the first black uh boxing Jack. heavyweight champion yeah. yep and he was uh doing uh supposed to be doing kind of a little exhibition with the middleweight champ stanley ketchell and okay. right and stanley ketchell was a double tough dude i think he was one of those dudes that like from age 14 was a hobo on trains trying to survive <laughs> right you know basically sleeping out in the freezing cold and hot. anyway so apparently they had kind of an arrangement where they wouldn't go real hard but ketchell the smaller man I think decided, you know, I got to see what I can do with this big man and, and hit him and knocked him down. And Jack Johnson was so angry uh, that he jumped from the ground up in the air while throwing an uppercut and knocked like four of Stanley Ketchell's teeth out. And you could see it because they were in his boxing glove. He oh, beautiful. With, yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, you got to be careful what you ask for. You want to see what I'm made of? Well, yeah, you're made of four less teeth. That's what you're made of. That's it, exactly. And so I guess it could be that if that if they if they arrange that, as long as Vitor doesn't uh, pull a Stanley Ketchell uh, on him, because if he did, then I could see a Vander just absolutely, you know, knocking him cold. But it'll be yeah. interesting. But how about the co-main event? These are two guys also that, that yeah. you were on the you were fighting, I'm sure, on the same card at some point with. Uh, first of all, between Anderson Silva and Tito Ortiz, were you any more familiar personally on a friendly basis with one or the other? Uh, yeah, I know, I know Tito better than uh, uh, Vandalay, you know, Anderson. every time I've met Vandalay, he's been very nice to me and polite. Anderson, but he, Silva, right? I hadn't really spoke much English, you know, he just kind of you know, smiles and nods and bows and you know, whatever. He, he's nice. Yeah. But I mean, I, I know I've, I've hung out with Tito before. Gotcha. And so Anderson Silva did look impressive in that fight in Mexico Oof. against Julio Cesar Chavez uh, Jr. I mean, legit, you know, a legit fighter, boxer right there, and he beat him in his own game. To me, that was extremely impressive. I don't think people were talking about that enough how good anderson silva look yeah to be beating a guy like that so 100 percent, i agree a adam my producer adam was there working with that project and he definitely was uh, a believer and so am i anderson was great we talked to him beforehand and uh i did a i oh, i did a great interview side by side with anderson and then the camera upload screwed up and we couldn't uh, we couldn't use it. It was unfortunate because we talked about some interesting stuff. I had I had asked him about in the shoot to box where he started, and yeah. and he had great things to say again about Coach Rafael Cordero yeah. uh, being one of the best coaches out there. He didn't seem to feel so good about the the guy that created it all, Hujamar Federigo, but uh, he didn't elaborate on that. But you know, but in this in this matchup. I, I ask you, what Tito Ortiz is a little bit of a bigger, he's the bigger man. I shouldn't say a little bit. He's the bigger man. Yeah. He's height-wise, they're about the same at about six foot two. But Tito always, you know, pretty much dehydrated like crazy yeah. to make 205. And Anderson primarily fought at 185 uh, and yeah. with a couple of forays into the, into the 205 limit. So I have a feeling Anderson's probably walking around just over 200 pounds maybe. And Tito is walking around nowadays probably at like 240 um yeah i, I bet i bet there's closer to 210, 215 220 okay. so how does what is tito gonna do in there he's got that big head he's got that chris lieben head and i know hard, you know hard, chris hard lieben defend. yeah so but what's uh, i don't know to be honest with you he's never i mean he's been doing this forever but he's never really struck me as a guy who's 
really ultra confident on his feet and feels really re- feels comfortable there i should say yeah um i know he feels comfortable enough to do mma work to get what he needs to get but when it's just two hands and that's it anderson's going to be so relaxed out there. i think you're going to see a big tight two door teams is going to be very defensive and try not to get hit a lot um if we gets offensive i can see him trying to to clasp a lot you know grab on the inside um, I don't see him loosen. I mean, every time I think he's going to try and throw a punch, I think Anderson's going to be there to counter. Yeah. So I, I feel like Tito, I don't even know what his game plan is going to be. I mean, you try and go in there and push Anderson around and rough him up. Um, it's really your only game plan because you're not going to outstrike him. You're not going to just, you know, out jab him. What are you, you going to really do to him? Are you going to catch him with something he's not ready for? No, I mean, you could bum rush him and push him around for a while, but that's all you can really do. And that doesn't really work well with Anderson. You know what I mean? He's going to be so relaxed. And so confident, I, I just don't see what Tito is really going to do. I think that's going to be, of all the fights we're talking about, is going to be, I think, the most one-sided. Yeah, I think so too. The odds makers have it about ten to one favorite for uh, Anderson Silva. I, you know what I wonder? The more these fights go on with MMA fighters that don't have much of a back boxing background, and yeah. they're, and they're in the squared circle. Do you think at some point, everyone talks about it, we haven't seen it so far. Do you think at some point we're going to see an MMA fighter say, hell with it, I'm grabbing this guy and I'm slamming him, or I'm going to take him down, elevate him? I don't, and it's like, people always ask me that, like when I was doing stuff, did you just want to take him down? Did you want to kick him in the box? And like, no, I mean, it's like, uh, it's like if you're, you know, uh, you ever see like a, professional basketball player and a baseball player whatever like people play multiple sports they don't confuse them you don't go try and you know i mean it, it's not that hard you know what I mean? right only way that can happen if somebody got rocked and their head went in there but I, I i don't even see that happen there you when you've been doing this sport though as long as these people have um you know you practice and you train these different disciplines it's just you, you, you flip a switch like okay i'm doing this i'm doing that i've I, if they're doing that, I don't think they're very high level. So I think any high level guy, I don't see that happening. Yeah, it makes sense. Although otherwise, you could I could just see Tito getting completely annihilated. Like you know, I. But the yeah. question is, Anderson is a good boxer now, and he was impressive. But I don't know. Like remember what he did to Forrest Griffin, and you know, and and some other guys where oh. he was just so much faster than them, he could almost you know make a fool of them. Is he that yeah. fast anymore, or is it, or, or or with the skills that he has, could he get, could he just totally make a fool of Tito? Uh, I- I think he could. I don't think it's about how fast he is right now because the speed is one of the first thing that goes. Yeah. I think what it is is, you know, his his eyes and his knowledge. You know, he knows where things are going to be. He anticipates well, and I think he's going to. I think he like and, and like I said, it's different if you're going with a dynamic striker, a guy you can throw from all angles, do whatever. Tito's not that guy. No. So I mean, he's going to see. And Tito's not the fastest guy when it comes to punches. So he's going to see. Anderson's going to be able to put his hands down when he wants, move around, wait for Tito to throw a punch, and move his out of the way and counter. If he wants to do that, I think he has that ability. Makes sense. And obviously, you don't expect Tito's going to be pulling out any MMA technique like a takedown or a throw or a sweep or anything. However, people are saying that it's in the contract with these fights that if anyone breaks the rules, they're not getting paid. Do you know that for a fact? Can that even be done? (laughs) I don't think that could be 100%. I mean, I don't think they could pull it. I'm sure they could find them or something. Um, I've heard that as well, but I don't know if I believe that. I think that's just a talking point that people like to say. But, I mean, may, maybe there is something they could get fined if they do it. I don't see you could, how you could hold their full pay if they do that. Right, because it almost seems like if Tito's getting embarrassed enough, you know, he may just figure if I could just do one foot sweep or something where I can hurt Anderson's leg, maybe the one that he broke against Chris Weidman or something. And then, you I know. Don't- I mean, you know, I, we've seen Tito getting hit a lot by Chuck, and he just kind of went to the ground. You know, I think he was taking too many punches. He'll take a knee. You know, I, I just don't see him to stand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this guy down. I'm gonna throw a leg kick. I'm gonna get a take. I just don't, I don't know. I don't see it happening, man. I mean, gotcha. I know some a lot of people think might happen. I just don't see it. 
Understood. And then if we quickly jump into the winners that we expect, well, you know what? I know we're expecting Anderson Silva to win. I think yeah. and we're both expecting Evander Holyfield to win, although Vitor could give him somewhat of a tough fight. But if, uh, if, uh, if I know if Vitor and Tito, sorry, I know if Vitor and Anderson both won, there'd be no problem in making that fight because they've, they've yeah. fought each other before and people have wanted them to see the fight again. But if Evander Holyfield wins, at 58 years old against Vitor, A, do you think he would agree to a match with Anderson Silva? And B, what would that fight look like? And would Anderson accept that fight? You know, I don't know. To me, this isn't about... This isn't about that. This isn't about who's going to... It's not like they're trying for titles. This is purely prize fighting. You know, this is what this is. And this is what it's turned into. And it's just about... It's not about who's getting ranked higher and you have to win this fight. That's not a tournament. This is just about, you know, in my opinion, whoever they think can make the most money and generate the most revenue. And I don't know if Vander Holyfield versus Anderson Silva is a needle mover. I mean, I think there's like, they'll look into it and if they think it makes sense, they'll do it. Uh, but I could probably think of, you know, 10 other fighters they could probably put Anderson Silva in with that, that would make more sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. I don't I, I don't see that being the way they're trying to set this up. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I, I I think they're just trying to, to it's a it's a every time it's a money grab and whoever they think they can make the most money they're gonna try and do. Right. And, and I don't see them trying to build that up. Now if 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 every if if uh Holy Felix phenomenal was like, Oh my god, I wanna see him fight again, then they will do it. But at this point I don't think they're just trying to like set up tournament style things if this guy wins this guy wins we're going to match this guy up no. i think it's every time they're going to bring in new guys whatever they think they can sell uh i'm just waiting for uh i'm just waiting for oscar to get better and for me to get that call so yeah if you guys can make that happen you, you let me know we will do everything everything we can i'll talk to adam and he'll put it in people's head maybe we can man that'd be yeah. awesome um i you- love that dude i'd love it like i said i've had, had 15 pro boxing match never got knocked out or anything and uh you know i think i'd love to fight um the Oscar I see now. <laughs> that would be amazing because you're what, like three years younger than him, five years younger than him, something like that. Uh, well, I I, uh, I just turned forty seven, but I mean, I'm I work out all the time, and uh, you know, I, I'm not a. Uh... I, I'm taking really good care of myself. Yeah, so. without a doubt. No, I know you are. That would be amazing. What uh, What would be the weight limit if you could choose it for a fight with Oscar? One seventy five. One seventy five. Then I think he'd be happy with that, probably, huh? Yeah, that's what. That's what I mean. I don't. I don't. He, him getting up to 190 is not going to be good for him, cardio wise, body, any of that stuff. So um, that's when the first of them they were talking to me about it. They said something about being about the same way to probably be at 170. I was like, perfect. You know, I'll do that all day long, man. I could, I could make that in a week if I had to. You know what nice. I mean? And uh, I just think that'd be a fun one. I've always wanted to. You know, I, I loved watching him fight, man. And uh, I just love to get in there with with uh, a legend like that, man. That'd be great. Absolutely, it'd be awesome. Uh, question for you. If Jake yeah. Paul were to be mulling over the guys on this Saturday's card, probably the easiest fight for him would probably be against Tito. But how do you think how do you think Jake Paul would would fare? And if I'm wrong against Tito, let me know. How do you think he would fare against the other three? Uh Vitor, uh uh Anderson, Holyfield, or Oscar, let's say. Uh I mean, I think I'd like to see him fight Anderson. I think Anderson would be too, too, too slick for him, yeah. um, too good. And you know, I think I think that'd be good. Vitor, uh, that being, I think I think you, you take away a lot of what Jake. I mean, I'm, I'm a lot of this might change by based on how I see how these guys look. But I think Vitor is a, is a very good striker. I think he'd be. I think Vitor does very well against him. Because once again, you're taking away, you know, Jake Paul's number one thing. He's big, strong, you know. So Vitor, you know what I mean? So I don't think, I think that kind of gets rid of that. Um, once again, Oscar, I, I have to see, I mean, we haven't seen the guy fight since 2008. I don't right. know. I, I want to see how he looks if he fights. And um, I think it'd be a really tough fight for him because the guy's just big, man. I'm telling you, those, those Jake, Jake and, and Logan, they're, they're, they're big guys, man. They, they might be getting to 190, but it's not like they're walking in a 190. No. I guarantee they're heavier than that, you know. And yeah. you're looking at pretty big. Just like look at their wrists compared to Oscar. That's going to be night and day. You know, just, yeah. just their frame handles 200 plus pounds. Oscar doesn't. So right. I, I'd have to see him fight. I think it'd be a very tough fight for him. Absolutely. And then I think Evander Holyfield would beat Jake Paul in about eight seconds. 
Well, I, I don't think he beat him in eight seconds, but I think he, here here be my only problem. I think I think he beats him as well. But the only problem could be once again if we get Holyfield out there and he's interested, I'm going to go out here and spar and not try, not try and take these guys' heads off. You could get in another situation like Woodley, where he just out moving around too much and trying to throw some jabs, and and Evander might not care. Like he might not try to take him out, but I, if he wanted to, I think he really could. Easily, you know what I mean? He's bigger stronger way more experienced but once again we might have a guy who's just going out there with a different mentality like i'm not here to kill people i'm just here to get some work and i don't know i'd like to i'll tell you after i see this fight absolutely would you want to see uh, a tyson holyfield three and if so who do you think wins it uh hmm. well he, he, here's the thing and, and once again i don't personally believe that Tyson really and then wants to go in there and, and fight, fight. Right. You know, I think they want to go in there and say, hey, here's what I think happened. I, I know at one point, you know, I'm doing the bare knuckle commentary and they offered him a, a substantial amount of money to come do a bare knuckle fight. And I think he probably thought about it and he's like, you know what? I can go out here and spar my friend Roy and make a lot of money and not really risk anything. You know what I mean? I think they, they probably are smart enough to think, man, I mean, do I have head damage done? Do I have problems? Do, do I want to go out there? And do that for what? When I can go out here and do this and get paid a lot and not really have any risk. That's my thought. So I don't think they want to go out there and take each other out. They might go out there and dance around and spar, but I mean, I can't even really predict who would win that because I don't think it's a real fight. You know, and just like the whole time Roy and Mike were going to fight, I kept telling people, this is not going to, nobody's getting knocked out here, I promise. I mean, yeah. This is not a fight. This is a sparring match. And, you know, people, I think they made it look really good, but. When you're, I mean, you're just hitting hard to the body. You can take those all day, and you're not trying to hit hard to the head. That, that's what I think happens. So, I mean, we're throwing these hypothetical things out there that I think are impossibilities to happen. Yeah, you could be right. Let us know uh, what's up with the BKFC. When's the next big event? You, you do an this, amazing job this there. This weekend, brother. This weekend, Tell we're us. moving to Omaha, Nebraska, BKFC 21. I'm really excited about that. And then I, I believe we just got tons of new places coming up, a lot of different states. Uh, people are finally starting to understand the fact that this is as safe as anything, probably safer than, definitely safer than boxing, probably safer than MMA too. I mean, you're not taking the the pounding to the head like you do with other ones. You can't do that because you'll get cut open. So yeah, absolutely. It's really safe. So, I mean, starts, states are opening up. I'm really enjoying it. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, we got, we got one on Nebraska this weekend. BKFC 21. If you don't, if you're on the, the the bare knuckle TV app, I don't know what's wrong with you because that's the cheapest thing you're gonna find in, in, in uh, combative sport. It's cheap and uh, there's tons of good stuff on it every month. It's an amazing deal. The main event on that is uh, Richmond versus uh, Dakota Cochran. Nice, Dakota Cochran, such a tough guy, and he's from Nebraska, so that's right there in his backyard. There are gonna be a ton of people cheering for him. Oh yeah, he's a he's a really tough guy. Richmond came in with his last fight and knocked out Marcel Stamps, but you know this looked fantastic, man. Fantastic. Well, I look forward to it. You do a great job there. It's an amazing team, uh, and uh, David Feldman puts on a great show, and always amazing to see you call it. Chris, Thank like you. you know, I can't wait to to watch the BKFC 21. You guys tune in, an amazing deal, and uh, Chris really appreciate your time and fleshing this out man because not only do a lot of people get an idea you know what's really going on but even for me to have a more clear idea uh because you've been in the game so long and you know boxing and mma and uh and all of these guys man so really appreciate your insight it means a lot no problem let me know anytime thank you for watching the hannibal tv please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews match videos or news updates Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.